Francoise Lutala 6. From the Convent to the Salvation of God This testimony is the sixth part of a series of seven. They had kept their word. It was a punishment I had to remember all my life. Who can forget the loss of his four children in one day? My children, my dear children, removed in one day from the face of the earth. I was touched in what I had the most expensive in the world I let myself go to. Despair. I could not imagine how far the reprisals of the murderers of my children could go. I was dead more than alive. After this morning, John's parents agreed to separate me from their son. It was a great shock for me to lose, in less than a year, those who were the dearest in the world. My husband did not immediately obey his parents' orders, but he finally gave in. The harassment caused by the demons, and other difficulties, finally got the better of the little resistance that remained in him. One night John left so he would not come back. Later, he remarried, but I know. He still loved me. He began to drink and smoke excessively. Three years after his forced separation, he succumbed to lung disease. Although not yet, at that time, received the salvation of God, I had forgiven him. I knew it was not John's fault that he had fled the harassment of demons. I did not want anything bad to befall him. At the service of evil. Now that I was abandoned to myself, the demons were able to find in me a favorable field of action. Knowing that I did not have much to lose now, the demons changed tactics to me. They became courteous in their manner of communicating with me, sometimes even kind. They used me. More and more during this period. I became their wife. Evil spirits cannot reproduce themselves. This is how they always call on human beings to reproduce and to carry out the great campaign of the seduction of humanity organized by Satan. The union between a human being and an evil spirit gives birth to a monster half man and half animal. These spirits can perish only charred by the power of God. However, the fallen angels do not perish in this way. If they dwell in a human body, they can be driven out or dislodged by the Holy Spirit when we invoke the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew 12:28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Remained alone at home, I became the wife of several demons. Two to three times a week, I gave birth to these monstrous children. I fed them within two or three days, and that was enough for them. Then I took care of others. I tell you what I lived, to expose these things in the open, for the glory of my Savior. Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. Now, the greatest work of Satan is to keep us away from God, to prevent us from knowing God and His Son Jesus Christ. If a human being had accidentally entered the room where I was, he could not have seen anyone but me. While legions of demons were bustling around me, all a visitor could have seen was that I had swollen breasts like those a woman who is breastfeeding. I did not wash, I was washed. I did not cook or market, I did not do it for myself. I did not know where the food came from. Can you imagine a woman with hair braiding on their own or eating unseen food? It was my case though. Oh. My God, may my mouth continue to praise your greatness, your strength, and your omnipotence, forever and ever. Amen. Exhortation Beloved, you must know that Satanists and those who practice some occult sciences use a vocabulary different from ours. For example, bars, nightclubs, dance halls, hotels, etc. are their stores. I do not see some people who call themselves Christian take or hold public houses, hotels, nightclubs, etc. It's insane. If God allowed us to see what is happening in our universe, I'm not sure there would be many brave people to go for a walk in daylight in some places. There is a 
lot going on that God in his love does not want us to see. Imagine a huge toad urinating in the glass of a consumer in a bar, while he thinks we are pouring him to drink. The consumer does not see anything that happens in the invisible. How would we react if we saw huge orangutans fly in the sky in broad daylight? Everyone would flee. These things are really happening. Praise the Lord for hiding these things from our eyes. My father's visit. During all this time, no member of my family came to see me, although knowing everything that had happened to me. But one day my father came to visit me. I do not know if anyone had gone to warn him. He arrived, a Bible in his hand. When he was on the threshold of the house, a voice told him to go out. As he tried, perplexed, to understand where this voice came from, he was hit on the head and fell. My heart ached very badly when I saw my dear father get up with difficulty while staring at me in astonishment. I was sitting in an armchair and started crying. From the moment I saw my father in the doorway, I was speechless. It was difficult for me to make any sound. I wanted to shout to warn him not to approach me, but I remained silent. Again the voice of a demon thundered as he spoke to my father, Get out, it's an order, go out. First, throw what you hold in your hand, and then tell what brings you here. My father walked back to the door. Once outside, he turned his head in my direction, then looked at his Bible. Then he decided. He did not cast the Bible but laid it on the ground. He advanced to enter but he was ordered to advance on his knees. I saw a tear flow on my dad's cheek. He knelt down and began to crawl towards me. When he came near me, he reached out to kiss me. It was then that I was raised from the ground. Do not touch her. Sounded a voice. My father was a pastor of a large Lutheran church. Seeing him coming, I had renewed hope because he had to Occupy the privileged position of someone who knows the will of God. Since the priests had failed, the pastors could only succeed. In this case, my father could only do better. But when I saw him, kneeling, crawling like an earthworm, obeying the orders of those who had asked for his death for me to heal, I lost all hope of healing one day. Always squatting, instead of praying to God and Invoking the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit, my father began to invoke the spirits of his ancestors, citing each one by name. This occult prayer appeased or seemed to appease the demons. My chair went back to the ground. Seeing this, my father pushed his boldness to demand that the spirits of his pagan ancestors bring me with him. The demons told him that it was impossible. She'll die along the way. We will kill her. She will not live. In the end, my father got the upper hand and managed to get me. If the evil spirits that kept me captive yielded to my father's demands, it was because the spirits he had invoked were of a rank higher than theirs. They had more rights over me, because of blood ties and family ties. My father had continued his monologue until the evening, and the demons had relaxed their grip on me, to the point that I could move easily. After taking me home, my father summoned the family members that evening to rule on my situation. At the Candelung Witch Doctor In our society, women occupy the second position. Thus, there is a long list of taboos for women. Some people go so far as not to admit women into traditional practices. It was the case of the witch. Doctor whom my father had contacted to have his beloved daughter exorcised. At first, and to raise a theoction, the witch doctor refused to take care of my case, simply because I was a woman. He had never treated a woman. He says, bringing us here a woman is an insult to us. But he added. However, given your respected position of pastor, I am willing to do you this little service. 
provided you have the means to appease the spirits irritated by this affront. In addition to the money, you will have to bring twelve goats. The next morning, I was given a drink in a jar. It was a drug because after having consumed it, my whole body weakened and I lost consciousness, I was deposited unconscious in a hole of one meter fifty deep, one meter eighty of long, and fifty centimeters wide. The hole was covered with tree trunks, branches, and foliage, and then with earth above. A big fire was lit on this hole, while I was inside. A group of dancers stood around the fire. Trained by tam-tams, the dancers embarked on a furious ritual dance. At that moment, the master of the place, the witch doctor, came on the scene. He came out of his laboratory, a box built a little apart from the others. He made his appearance while dancing and approached the covered hole in which I was unconscious. After taking a few steps of the ritual dance around the fire, he thrust his spear into the fire. A cry springs from the fire, hey! When he pulled out his fire spear, it was all soaked with blood. The fetisher exclaimed, one less. And he began to dance again. He thrust his spear a second time into the fire. A second cry springs from the fire, hey! He pulled out his lance spotted with blood again. Happy to see the efficiency of his art, he exclaimed, two less. Then he threw in the direction of my father, we will have them all, the persecutors of your daughter, their blood on. My spear is a good sign. The old man began to dance again. When he wanted to press his spear for the third time into the fire, a cry sprang up again not in the fire this time, but in the audience. Among the onlookers who ran for the occasion, oh fire! Burn! Converging their gaze in the direction indicated by the onlooker, the assistants saw that the little box from which the old man had come out earlier was on fire. The flames tended to spread to other dwellings. With astonishing speed for his age, the witch doctor went to the flames. He almost burned himself but he was restrained. He failed to recover anything from his burning box. The fire was still under control. Despite the loss of the laboratory and all its contents, the other houses were spared. Asked who had set the laboratory on fire, the angry old man explained that it was not a man who had set his house on fire, but the spirits who had revolted because he had accepted to treat a woman. Take your girl out of here and go away. You killed me. I am dead. I do not want to see you anymore. Go away. Still unconscious, I came out of the hole and was carried away. Although not honoring his contract, the witch doctor did not restore anything to my father, nor a goat, nor a single penny. The fact that my father was chased out did not give me hope. The demons laughed at me and sneered. They kept telling me that it was they who had the last word. For them, if I wanted to achieve salvation, I had to decide to kill my father. After this last failure, I knew that I only had one thing left to do, to commit suicide. I said to myself, since they do not have the courage to kill me, I will do it for them, and my father will be spared. It was not stoicism on my part, but rather paternal love. Since I had lost everything, preserve as much as anyone who is still alive. On the way to Tanzania, I was thinking of how to achieve my evil plan, but the Lord had another destiny for me. The day I decided to poison myself, my father came to tell me that he was planning to take me to Tanzania. As soon as possible. According to a statement from Tanzanian Radio, there was a great spiritual awakening in this country. The Lord performed miracles there as in biblical times. The deaf heard. The blind saw their sight, the paralytics walked, and those who were possessed by unclean spirits were delivered by the word of God. My father said to me, I've decided to take you there in a week, 
my daughter, we're going to use this week to get ready. Two days before we left, a relative brought a woman to my father and asked him to tell his story. She did it without being asked. Daddy, I do not know if you recognize me. I'm the one who was crazy, and who was walking half naked in this village. Since our visit to the witch doctor, we had not returned to Lubumbashi, we had retired to our native village. Less than a week ago, a niece married in Kasongo, chief town of Zone located at 90 kilometers from Shivunda, our village, came to get me there. The pastor of the Kasongo Assembly of God had invited a couple of evangelists from Kinshasa. This couple prays to God in an original way. For example, they cast out demons in Jesus' name. Several demons in my case were delivered through the prayer of this couple. When this cousin, she pointed out the person who had brought her, informed me of your intention to go to Tanzania, I did not hesitate a moment to come and see you tell you to go to Kasongo instead. If you agree to go, I am ready to accompany you. I am certain that the God of this couple will deliver your daughter as he did for me. The demons did not want me to go to Kasongo. They told me they would do anything they could to stop me from going. That's how they paralyzed both legs, preventing me from standing up. They sister carried me on her back, and we could continue our way to Kasongo. We were a group of six people, my father, my cousin, two cousins, the woman who had told us this news, and me. At home, travel is on foot. Not that we lack road infrastructure, but we could not afford to wait for a car, given the scarcity of vehicles in this part of the country. Continuing our painful march, we stopped to rest in a village, having walked for at least 20 kilometers. We met a woman who came from Kasongo. She carried a child on her back and glorified the Lord by singing hymns of praise. My father, who wanted to know the reason for her excitement, called out to her. The woman tells us this, my daughter was deaf for a long time. I come from Kasongo, where a man and a woman from Kinshasa prayed to God for my daughter to hear. Just after their prayer, I called my child, and she answered me. You cannot imagine what joy is mine. I wanted to thank them for what they had done, but they told me that they were only instruments used by God and that it was to God that I had to give glory. Since then, I'm only thanking him for the healing of my daughter. That's why you see me singing, all joyful. People say they plan to return soon. It seems like they have yet to stay a week. I will look for my little brother who lost his sight at a young age. All the while this woman was talking, the voices kept telling me that she was lying, she's lying, she's lying, do not listen to her, let's go back, do not go. My father said to me, Francoise, it is God who sends us these people to help us. Take courage and hurry us, otherwise, if we hang out, we risk missing them. At that moment the demons nailed my father to the ground. He had a kind of sudden cramp that forced him to lie down. It was impossible to advance. The paralysis that had prevented me from walking had been transmitted to my father. The demons said to me, since he's the one who wants to take you there, we'll see how he goes about it. I fell sobbing into my father's arms, all shot down. He encouraged me to continue the journey without him. This rheumatism crisis could not choose such a good time to slam me down. With a little rest, one day at most, I will be restored. The pain will be less strong than now. Since you can walk now, take courage, my daughter, and go find those people that this woman told us just now. I will join you as soon as possible. Do not worry about me, it will happen. Then, turning to his nephew, he said, Take care of your sister. Beloved of the Lord, it is by faith that I have gone this distance regardless of what my companions 
told me. I walked slowly, staggering. Every ten kilometers we rested to breathe. The disease had weakened me greatly. The privations, added to the annoyance of the demons, had accompanied me. On my long road to healing, I only had about a day of walking when the demons removed the use of speech, thus preventing me from communicating with the outside world. The rest of this testimony is reported by Brother Kapena Sibwabwe. Chapter 9, The Rescue Although I have repeatedly heard Sister Lutala testify, I could not put this testimony in writing. Without questioning eyewitnesses, the very actors God used for his deliverance, Brother M. Pongo Moses, and Sister Philomene K. Seka. Kapena Sibwabwe, K.C. Pastor M. Pongo, according to Sister Lutala, you are one of the two people whom the Lord has used for his deliverance. Can you tell us how God asked you to do this work? Pastor M. Pongo Moses, M.M. Thank you, my beloved brother Kapena, for the opportunity you give me to speak about this great work, for the first time after so many years. It was through prophecy that God had asked us to intervene. Around May 1983, I was in Messina, in the wireless neighborhood, where I ran a local church. I often went to the upscale neighborhood of Rhiney in the Lemba area, where my sister in Christ Philomene K. Seca lived, to visit her. On May 19, after a long absence, I went to visit her. She greeted me with these words, Blessed be you, my brother. Since you come from God. Two days ago, the Lord spoke to me in a night vision and showed me the political map of my country, Zaire followed by a close-up on the Kivu region. I noticed that there was a big snake wrapped around one of the sub-regions, that of Manyema. I asked the Lord what it meant. The Lord gave me the interpretation of the vision, the great serpent that you see is the devil. He is seducing a lot of people in this part of the country. If I showed you these things, it's because I have an important mission to give you. Go down to this place to glorify my name. I answered the Lord, but I am a woman. Your word forbids me to take authority over a man. 1 Timothy 2.12, it is not only women in this sub-region. The Lord said to me, you will not go alone, and in two days I will send you my servant. M. Pongo Mais. It will be a sign from me arranged to pay him his transport ticket. I received this message on May 17. Two days later, as the Most High told me, here you are. After missing for I do not know how long. Continued in Part 7.